Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the Command 66 Day Challenge 3.0. Today is day 17. Marty Miller here from Houston, Texas, launching the second or maybe the third portion now of this Command 66 Day Challenge. We've gone over a brief overview and settings. We've gone into contacts, and today we're going to start our series on opportunities. So opportunities is this handshake icon. It is the sixth one down on your left hand side. And we're going to dive into kind of a brief overview of what opportunities looks like. We're going to talk about stages, phases, and checklists, and then continue on from there. So opportunities is especially important to know because it's basically your sales pipeline. It's also how you get paid as well. So I'm actually in my wife's account because we haven't done much in her account. So that way I, you guys can see it, um, especially if you're new, the same way um, that I see it on my screen. I've actually done some editing of stages and phases in my actual command account. So we're going to start with kind of a blank account, if you will. When you first log in, you're going to see this opportunity to bring in dot loops from command. Uh, we'll have a separate video on that. So you can just X out of that for right now. When you look at the main home screen of opportunities, you're going to see what we call your opportunity dashboard. And there are three main pipelines right now. That is listings, buyers, and leases. In each pipeline, you can see that there are five main phases. What happened is Gary and Josh and the labs team got together probably two, 300 agents all in a room and said, I want you to outline the average transaction, what it goes through the steps and phases and stages and areas and everything that it goes through from very beginning to very end. And you can imagine they probably got 200 different answers. And yet most agents in that room could agree that it goes through five main phases. And those phases are cultivate. That's basically everything before I get the right to meet with the client. Here is um, leading up to the meeting, the actual meeting, and just after the meeting. Here's when we go active or just before we go active on the market. Once we have a executed contract and then once we have closed the transaction. So these are the five main phases that you can see through each of the sales pipeline. When we come down to the bottom, you can see a little bit more information. So you have got ratios as far as how many listings buyers and leases and what percentage of your business those make up. You can see kind of a historical trend over here on the right hand side of your opportunities and you can look at all of them or you can filter by listing buyer, landlord or tenant opportunities there. And then at the very bottom, you can see what's closing this month. So a quick and easy way to kind of get an idea of what opportunities are closing this month. On the right hand side of each one of these pipelines, you see the box that says GCI for gross commission income. And you actually have two kind of areas here for potential income and probable income. Potential income you can see is the total commission from all listing opportunities. So it's everybody in your pipeline, if they actually listed their house at the price we think they should list it at and sold it, what that commission would be based upon our average commission or stated commission in each one of those deals. Same thing here for buyers and leases. So that would basically mean everybody in my pipeline, if they all close, I have a potential income for blank. Now we know that not everybody in Cultivate makes it to appointment, not everybody in appointment makes it to active, not everybody active goes under contract, and unfortunately not every contract closes. So that's where probable income comes in. And you'll see when we start diving into the stages within each one of these phases, we're gonna start getting some percentages. And those percentages reference the chance that this deal is going to lead to a closing. When we start multiplying those percentages by the commission for each one of the deals that we have in our opportunities, then we start getting to probable income. Always good to rely heavier on probable income versus potential income. That way you kind of brace yourself for potential fallout, etc. So we don't want to make, um, you know, we see, hey, I've got five deals closing over the next three months, so I'm going to go buy a new Tesla. And then the first payment comes due and three of those deals actually drop out. And I realize, uh oh, I can't afford that Tesla. So probable income, always better to go off of potential income. That's essentially the pipeline dashboard. If you look at the very top, you also do have the opportunity to look at all opportunities. 
and this sort of changes your view slightly. This is more of a list view, and so it will show you the name, address, who the opportunity is assigned to, and what type it is. It'll show you the phase, volume, and commission, and then closed, and also if there are any tags. You can also filter all of your opportunities by a variety of filters that you can see here on the right hand side. So these are all of the different ways that I could filter. So you can imagine, you know, 12 months in for you newer agents, you're going to have tons of opportunities in your pipeline. Some are in cultivate, some are appointments, some are active, some are still pending, some have closed. You want to start filtering those opportunities by certain phases, certain stages, certain opportunity types. Um, by tags. If you have a big team, you can actually filter by who owns the opportunity. Uh, when did it close? I want to see all of my closings from March, uh, all of my closings that were created in January, February, March, some uh, definite opportunities here to filter. Okay. Next, we're going to go into one of the phases or stages. So let's just start with listings cultivate. I can, when you hover over these, you see how this is the pointer, this is the finger. Anytime I get this point, this finger, it means it's a clickable link. So I can click on that. And when we dive into the cultivate phase, you can see that there are currently three stages. I can scroll left and scroll right. Each one of these is a stage within the cultivate phase. And you can see we start off by watching a lead. Maybe it's something that's come in. We haven't actually been able to connect with them, but they are in our database. They are a lead that we are working on converting. So just one we're going to watch, right? We've sent them some emails. We've sent them some texts. We're waiting for a response. Here's one. Maybe we get a response and yet they're not quite ready to move forward. So we're going to continue nurturing them. Here's one that's hot. They're like, yep, we want to meet with you. We're still working on the date, but we want to meet soon, right? And you can see how you can move and I'll show you this in a future video, you'll actually create an opportunity and it'll look like a little card and you can click and drag that opportunity from stage to stage. Now, if for any reason you don't like the names of these stages, you can come in and edit them. If you feel like this percentage is too high or too low with regards to everybody that gets in my watch has an X percent chance of closing, you can change that as well underneath edit stages. And finally, you can create checklists, which I'll show you momentarily for each one of these stages as well. So let's click on the edit stages button. And you can see we have the three stages that we just talked about. We have checklists inside each one of these stages. Okay, now you can see that these are in here. I have actually created and shared some of these. Okay, so these have been shared with Nicole from my team. Yours may say zero of zero, so you would have to come in and actually add checklist items. You could name the item, right? Confirm appointment day of. Let's just say I wanted to have that. Okay, and so here is an item. If I wanted to adjust that item, I could click, hold, and move that item up and down, right? So you can reorder the list. And you can have as many checklist items, you know, I don't know if there's a limit. I haven't hit it yet. So you can have several different checklist items in here within your actual stage. You also, if you want, if you want to create a new stage, you have the ability to click on add new stage and right, you can put the stage name, what the probability of close is from this stage, and then where do you want it? Do you want it first, second, third, or now fourth? You also have the ability to then start your checklist down here at the bottom. So essentially it does take a little bit of time to build this out, build it out right. I would definitely time block, uh, you know, an hour, two hours, three hours, depending. It may be something that you work on with your team. If you have a team, uh, maybe with your coach and work through kind of what you're looking for on all of your checklists and then really dive into your numbers and start learning what your conversion ratios are. Um, so that is the sales pipeline cultivate. You can see as you go through each one of these phases. So here's appointment. Appointment has four stages, okay? So you can see that. If you get into active, you can see active has four stages. It actually has a fifth stage, this is legacy. This involves um, doing an import from dot loop. So um, you may have some files show up here if you've actually done a dot loop import. Otherwise, these would be the main ones that you would be working on. 
You can see under contract, you have escrow, inspections, appraisal, clear to close. And then finally closed, one here, and then you have your legacy, right? Which are these are ones that have come over from dot loop as well. So that's the list view. You can also see board view if you prefer. Um, I'm sorry, that was the board view. If you prefer looking at them in a list where they are rows instead of columns, you can click on list view here and you can see then it changes kind of what they look like instead of being left to right. Now they are top to bottom. Really just a personal preference on how you want that to look. All right, so that is a quick overview of the opportunity pipelines. So we have talked about the three pipelines in general. We have talked about down here at the bottom, we've got some additional stats for the ratio of our business, our activity, and what's closing. In addition, we have talked about the five stages, or excuse me, five phases, and then the multiple stages within each phase, the ability to edit those, the ability to create checklists for them, and the ability to add and edit checklist items. So that is a um, brief and yet hopefully comprehensive overview of the basis of opportunities. Tomorrow, we're gonna to dive into the ability to actually create an opportunity, and then we're gonna move forward from there. In addition, this afternoon, I fly out to Las Vegas, Nevada for the Future Conference, which is super exciting. If you want more information about that, you can check out the uh, KW Connect live stream menu, and we'll be live streaming that conference Monday the 9th of December and Tuesday the 10th of December basically multiple technology companies presenting their products, also mixed in with uh, various masterminds and uh, kind of talks from the stage from top uh, technology users and KW Command. Just a great way to kind of plug even further into real estate technology and kind of see what the future is going to look like. So that is tomorrow the 9th and Tuesday the 10th. I'll most likely be making some posts and some videos as well, talking about that. So hopefully you'll join me for those items and uh, otherwise, Guys, I will, as always, look forward to speaking with you tomorrow. Thanks so much.